You are watching Area DMG. Sorry for being a little late for setup here, guys. Thanks so much for showing up for my first ever panel. Um, so if I suck, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm very technically fine, but speaking in front of people is a little bit more of a, a you know, new thing to do. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I am Ronan, and uh, kind of gotten around to being known around here for doing high-end props and armor and things like that, and uh, it's really my passion in life. I mean, you can see some of the pieces that are finished, like the beautiful Claymore there, um, the beautiful Joe helmet, which is almost finished, and the, uh, the Sakura wand. Um, and I'm just going to kind of take you through some of the different things that uh, we do to kind of get those effects. Hello, PowerPoint. Quit thing. Yeah, I'm fine. Hopefully it will load. Do the 90s way of fixing it, smacking it until it works. Uh, no, this is an expensive laptop. I, I would take one of these things and smack you upside the head first. It's a to your head. Uh, I promise you that. Okay, wonderful Wi-Fi is not being my friend today, apparently. Um, so, I we will just exit out of that. So, um, I've kind of dubbed this, you know, the intro to advanced prop and armor construction, or how I learned to stop worrying and love fiberglass, and a few other things. Because uh, a lot of people tend to find some of the more expensive or the more exotic materials to be very scary, uh, and they really don't have to be. Um, but let's move on to, you know, what do I feel, you know, that separates advanced stuff from just, you know, the entry level kind of thing. Um, a lot of the times your, the quality of your materials can make a huge difference in the, the finished work of stuff that you're doing. Um, Techniques, which are things that you just learn through practice, through learning online. Um, I spend stupid amounts of hours on YouTube just researching what other people have done. Um, the kind of skills that you learn, so you know, everybody has to kind of start at some level, but you will eventually acquire skills that even if you think you're a little too, you know, not ready to do high-end equipment, it's just getting there. It's not like I have some magical ability to make pretty things. <laughs> I've just taken my time to get to that point. Um, one of the big things that I really per, um, work on for my stuff is like durability. Durability is important. <laughs> this claymore. This thing is only two and a half pounds, but Would you do that with a just straight foam prop? No, you need to leave a nice little microphone shaped dent in it. But because of the way I have made that, it is durable enough to deal with the rigors of going through many, many conventions. Um, people have bumped that. It's been dropped and it still looks absolutely gorgeous. The only repair I've had to make on that thing is it actually got caught in a door at the Marriott and slice the tip off of it. I have since learned a new technique where all the tips of my swords are filled with urethane. So, what the heck? And you suck Google Slides. Um, Google Slides are Yeah, pretty much. Uh, another big thing is the type of finish you get on it. Uh, as you guys can probably see on this beautiful Joe helmet, that is polished to a dang near mirror finish. Now, to do that, a lot of it is again going to be the materials and just very simple techniques that take a little bit more time, but anybody can do. Uh, and of course, the final results is what you see when you get into the advanced type of stuff. So, I've got a few things that I've listed up here as far as what I think 
are common stuff that beginners use. And again, they're not always things, you know, things that beginners tend to use, or even stuff that a lot of times I will use myself. Does anybody have anything on this list that uh, isn't, you know, that they think of when they think of beginner level materials? PVC? PVC? Hot glue. Yeah. Who said it? Very back. In the hat. In the hat. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Oh, that's right. Did I forget to tell you? You respond to me, and I have candy thrown in your direction. I like when people respond to me. Um, anybody else? So who, who said hot glue? <laughs> what do you got? Bondo? Oh, I would actually love Bondo into a little bit more advanced type stuff. It takes a little bit of work to kind of figure out exactly how to use it. Um, I know these aren't like convention friendly, but copper pipes can also be used as material. Yeah. Or, and you know, uh, would, you, would you consider that like a beginner or, or, or more or, yeah, you can certainly use it. Well, if you're a plumber, then it should be. It should be beginner. <laughs> yeah, for a plumber, that's definitely you know common everyday stuff. Um, probably like uh, cardboard tubes. Cardboard tubes, yeah. <laughs> uh, paper mache. Very true. Yes. Who said that? That's good. Puff paint. Puff paint. Puff paint actually is great for doing some raising. It is, details. but definitely. Uh, the umbrella. Uh, super glue. Yes. Um, exactly. And, uh, huh? Yep. What you got? Blue glue? I mean, any types of glue could be used, yeah. I did actually see one guy who actually used real food but glued them together. That doesn't sound healthy to me. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be easy. It was more of a problem. If you shellac it first, you may be. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I've got kind of a list of oh. things that I can do. What do you do? Regular glue yeah. to protect the yeah. pink foam from corrosion. Yeah, that's a you know, great thing. Um, so just to keep you know, things moving, I've got kind of this list of things that I feel usually require a little bit more instruction, somebody to kind of hold the hand of whoever's using them. Or just you know crazy practice and learning how to use it yourself. You're, you're going to have a little bit more what I call stupid time, which is how the heck do I use this? Oh, I screwed it up. Okay, I don't use it that way. <laughs> uh, but like fiberglass, when we really get into a lot of people have misconceptions about fiberglass, um, so I will go over that fairly in depth. Um, urethane resins. Uh, wonderful materials, but also can be fairly intimidating because they have a steep learning curve. Silicones, um, you know, along the same line. Thermoplastics, and I just want to make it a little aside. I don't consider Warbler to be a thermoplastic. It's a thermoadhesive with filler media for additive um, because it doesn't function as a true thermoplastic where it will pretty well permanently retain its shape. Uh, under normal temperature conditions. Um, electronics and lighting. A lot of people are very intimidated by electronics, but even getting a super simple lighting effect. Um, I'll, I'll actually show you something. Actually, Caroline, there in the box should be a bag of little LEDs and a battery. Um, if you could just find that when we get to that point. Um, this guy? Yes. Thank you. You're um, And then, uh, as Anders mentioned, like automotive fillers and automotive paints. And when I talk automotive paints, I do not mean <coughs> stuff that you can spray out of a spray can. Um, I mean stuff that requires an air compressor and an actual spray gun. If you have a place to do this or can find a place to do this, this is a million times better. That's how you get a finish like this, with a little extra elbow grease after the fact, too. <laughs> it, you can't just spray and get it that shiny. There's a little more work to go through it than that. Um, does anybody else have things that they feel have seen the face? I use metal flashing a lot. Yeah, metal can be very intimidating. Um, just 
sometimes even for the danger factor of slicing yourself up with leather. Yep, leather. Who said 3D printing? That would be me. In the back there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. All right. Hey. That was solid. Interesting. Did she get uh, yeah. Did we have somebody else? Like cloth in general. Sewing's kind of a yeah. Um, sewing can be, but you know, sewing's gonna be more soft goods, you know, costume yeah. type stuff. I'm trying to stick more to you know the hard goods, the the accessories, the props, the armor. Um, and there are a million awesome people who do uh, classes or panels on sewing and classes on sewing. There's not as many of us who do props that are actually willing to put ourselves out there, I've noticed, to Thank you. give people you know, an idea of what's going on. Uh, so let's go. Yes. Always remember, it is okay to be a beginner. You don't improve if you don't try. Um, if you mess up, literally all you've done is learned a way not to do that. Um, I hate to use Buseyisms, but you know, fail first attempt in learning. Uh, it, that's one of the few you will ever catch me using, because otherwise I think those are stupid. But uh, you know, it's it's. I admittedly I use my own meme where I used um, you know sewing, but really, the best thing you can do is give it a shot. If you didn't do it right. Find somebody like myself or you know someone else who does this kind of stuff and ask them, hey, this had a problem. I was talking with some folks last night that they were using plastic in and they didn't have good results. Turned out they were spraying with a bone cold can in just slightly above freezing temperatures. Mm -hmm. Plasti dip's a material that really likes to be warm. Um, so I gave them a very simple tip of uh, you know just put the can in a like a pan of warm water. Don't actually, you know, boil the can itself or anything like that. But if you've got warm water, you can set it in. You can bring the can up to a nice warm temperature, and it will spray gorgeously. So, um, but the biggest and most important thing ever when you're dealing with higher end materials is safety. A lot of people, even non lesser stuff, a lot of times people will do silly things like spray paint inside in a closed room. <laughs> now I understand, yes. We make things in the middle of the winter and not everybody has the greatest space to do so. Respirators, you have simple safety equipment. You know, um, a lot of people don't even think to put, you know, safety glasses or goggles or face shields or anything like that on. Um, gloves, very simple gloves. They don't cost a lot for a box of gloves. Uh, I suggest nitrile because a lot of people have latex allergies. Uh, and nitrile tends to be less reactive with a lot of chemicals that are out there. Um, latex, I found if you get paint thinner on latex, all of a sudden you have this mushy glove that's like five times the size it should be for your hand. And the first time you look at something sharp, it's all of a sudden shrunk. Um, you know, a, a shop apron or a painter's coveralls. These are ridiculously inexpensive items that you can find at a hardware store. And number one thing, a lot of this stuff is very toxic fumes. Proper ventilation is very is key. And unfortunately, you know, since we're here and it's not working, I can't play my wonderful metal gear sound to deal with that. <laughs> nice way to this one, I'm actually going to at least force it to do it this way. So, first type of uh, safety equipment is just standard safety glasses. Uh, if you're dealing with any type of a rotary tool, like a Dremel or anything like that, people don't seem to think of it, or even just sanding a lot of times, if you have a, a small power sander. It can launch stuff into your face. Eyes currently cannot be replaced. <laughs> They're working on it, but they can't be replaced. Even and I've been running around this snake all day having a freaking eye patch over my eye. You know how sucky monovision is? Yes. You suddenly have zero depth perception and no perception to like an entire sight. Safety glasses are huge. 
um, if you're going to be dealing with something that might splash. Safety goggles are a little better. You're going to look like a silly scientist out of you know, a, a funny high school movie or something like that. But it's better than getting chemicals in your eyes. Because again, eyes don't grow back. Next thing, um, face shields, if you're really dealing with you know, any type of a heavy rotary equipment. Um, there's a video of me actually from last weekend when I was making the cosplay chess trophies. I should have been wearing my face shield. Unfortunately, my face shield decided to go skidding across my garage floor and I can't see anything out of it. So I was bad. Slap my hand, that's, that's bad. Uh, <laughs> but again, very inexpensive. You can get the you know, decent face shields at Harbor Freight for like 10 or $12. Um, if you're not willing to spend 10 or $12 on saving your face, there's something wrong with your priorities. <laughs> uh, then the good old respirator. Now when you're dealing with paints and stuff, you want to get something that is approved for um, like organics. You don't want one that's like a lead style one because there are different types. So you need to read the label, but um, things that are meant for paints and chemicals is the one you want because if you can smell something, it's getting into your nervous system and slowly doing damage. Simple stuff like this will save you from being one of those creepy old guys you know, later on in life that can't even stand up straight. Combine a few of those and you have a full face mask. So that does the job of a respirator and a face shield all at the same time. Brilliant. Simple gloves. Um, I just used the picture of the nitrile gloves, the black ones that are extra thick are wonderful because they're almost impossible to tear. I think it runs about 10 bucks for a box of them, but that, especially those style, will last you for quite a while. I had one actually under my uh, snake hand all day yesterday and another one all day today just because it was really gross inside. I'm not going to put an old glove back on. Um, but those, you know, now you're not absorbing chemicals in your hands because you're probably going to spill something on them if you're using that kind of stuff. Or spray painting and you hold something in your hand just to get that right angle. I know you've all done it. Yes. Uh, then you end up with that hand that's completely covered in paint and a funny color. Some of that stuff still absorbs through your skin. Black on the die. My house is like a crutch. Yep. For three weeks I was working. And the nitrile actually has smaller pores to it, so it's less likely to absorb in through the nitrile than the latex glove. Um, simple aprons. If you happen to like your clothes, great option. Also helps to prevent, you know, if you make anything hot. Like you decide to cut some metal with the rotary tool, hot things are going to usually stop on the apron before they stop on your skin. Um, and then the full-on painter's coveralls. Those are great. Um, like when I use fiberglass, when I'm cutting the fiberglass, a lot of times I'll use a rotary tool just because it's a lot faster. That makes very fine, fine little shards of fiberglass that will make you itchy for days. Mm -hmm. Set of $10 painters coveralls, never know you even did it. And then of course, Well, combine a few of those together, you know, eventually if it ever changes, you'll be able to see that you do your favorite breaking pattern. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so a good old selfie with the, uh, the painter's coveralls and the respirator <laughs> on. But it's all generally very inexpensive stuff that you can get your hands on to protect yourself. Uh, Anybody have others? Oh, questions sorry, this is a uh, good question. What's kind of the price range in terms of like for each of those things? Um, so I know like the safety goggles and the nitrile gloves are overall pretty cheap, but like kind of after that, especially when you get to like the uh, respirators and such. Respirators, you can get inexpensive. Like this is a Harbor Freight respirator. They don't tend to last as long, um, but you can get that for I think it's like fifteen or sixteen yeah. dollars. If you want the nicer 3M ones that tend to have a little bit more um, use and life to them, uh, they start about 25, 30 bucks. 
Um, with the full face mask, you're going to hit, I think, about 70. 50 to 70, depending on you know quality of them and things like that. Um, the one eight, in the picture is the center face mask. Yeah, it's one of the nice expensive ones that, you know, of course, they use for, for breaking that. Um, anybody else have questions about safety equipment? We just wanted to bring up on like leather gloves for working with metal. Yes, um, yeah, using yes. much heavier duty gloves for other things is It'll also protect great. you from cuts and heat, which mm -hmm. nitro gloves will not. Also, Very true. Uh, mechanics brand gloves. Why aren't you saw some candy? I know, I know, like five things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, you're talking about like mechanics, yeah, mechanics, brand, mechanics gloves. brand gloves are great. For so I, know, I know you have like seven pairs of them. Honor, you have like five of them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The mechanics brand gloves are are wonderful because they've got a little bit more flex than like a heavy leather glove, um, and they still have a lot of heat. I use my mechanics gloves a lot when I'm kind of pushing thermal plastics and stuff into place. Things that are already you know well above the skin's burning temperature, but you can. Just get a little bit of extra insulation. Um, also, again, helping to prevent cuts and stuff like that. Anybody else have questions or comments? No? The respirators are more thick. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's better and it takes a little bit to kind of get used to adjusting these know. things properly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but if you, can, if you can smell something, you need to adjust it a little bit better. Um, even when I've got my beard grown out really fully, if I get it cinched down tight enough, I can get enough of a seal that I don't smell when I'm painting. That's just itchy. Yeah. <laughs> It'll, you, you'll take it off and be like, ah! Those of you without facial hair, you know, don't worry about it. Do you ever find that she's like longer, gauntlet, or lower style gloves? I have not needed them currently, but that is something I want to get more into is welding, um, which that would be a necessity. Um, it, they are good also if you are doing using like rotary cutting, cutting tools, um, just because uh, shards of things will catch in that before they catch in your arm or whatever. Um, oh. <laughs> Do you need to like run up there and start tossing them out? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So. <laughs> okay, so I really want to get onto fiberglass because this is one of my favorite materials to use work with. Um, Casey actually has some samples that she's going to pass around the room so you can see. This is raw strand fiber um, glass fibers, uh, and there's two different types. There is the cloth. And then there's the mat. Um, but really what you get into is um, fiberglass really itself is a composite material. It's the strand fiber in whichever style you get and then a resin binder. Um, I constantly hear people say that fiberglass is too heavy. If somebody says that fiberglass is too heavy, my first response is you're doing it wrong. Um, <laughs> And it's one of those, I, thankfully, I learned how to do fiberglass dealing with um, race car applications. So you learn how to get absolutely the minimal amount of resin into the fiberglasses, or into the glass fibers themselves, which, because any more than you absolutely need to saturate the, the fibers is just weight. It does not add any strength, and too much resin actually reduces the strength. It's kind of counterintuitive, but um, the less resin you can get away with, the stronger it will be because your strength is in the, the, the glass fibers. Um, so when you combine those together, done properly, you actually create something that's much stronger than something else. Again, this sword uh, is done out of fiberglass. It was uh, originally sculpted in pink foam and a wooden dowel and then fiberglass with the cloth uh, because the cloth is actually stronger than the, the mat which is looks kind of like those little squiggly pressed fibers that are stuck together and I think that only has two layers on either side and they're just alternated so the weave it's you know originally goes like this way 
and then set on the angle. And that gets you the most strength possible per square inch. Um, again, we talked about the resin binder. You can use multiple different types of resins. The most common one is polyester resin, which is generally marketed as fiberglass resin. Um, you can use urethane resins, you can use um, other styles of epoxies and things like that. The polyester resin just has the best chance of absorbing into it in most cases. Um, a lot of people really use it for uh, Epicura armor. Um, this was done partially fiberglass, partially um, urethane resin on the inside, but it started out looking something like this. That is just simple cardstock that has been cut and glued together. Um, and fiberglass can even be used oftentimes in like molding applications. You can make jacket or mother molds for uh, larger pieces out of the fiberglass so you don't have a big massive chunk of silicone that you're trying to slush around. Because silicone gets heavy quick. And when you're trying to move things around, You'll either have arms for days, or you'll just have arms that you know hang at your side like limp noodles. <laughs> Silicone is also really expensive. The good stuff. It's wonderful material. Um, fiberglass application. Did you have a question? The fiberglass we got kind of felt like string. Um, yes, Why it's is that? because what it is is they've actually taken. Um, like silicates and heated them up and stretched them out into very fine little fibers, very similar to string. But it's it's like a glass strand that's so thin that it's actually flexible. Um, so it is it's very similar to a string. And sometimes you can actually see cords and cables that are made out of fiberglass. They're flexible and you can move them around, but they can pull a lot more weight than a normal rope. Anybody else have a question? Or was it? Uh, yeah, you mentioned that there's different uh, resins that you can use. Do they have different finishes once they are hardened? Or is that more dependent um, on the actual glass? The, well, the, yeah, the, the finish is going to depend more on the actual, like the fiberglass, okay. where you're doing a, 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 the chop mat or the um, nice. glass cloth. Mm -hmm. um, and even then, a lot of that's going to depend on how you finish right. beyond okay. that. Um, I've even had pieces where people want it that texture of the, 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 like the cloth. Mm -hmm. And it looks really cool when you really do it just right. The problem is you'll, all, you'll never be able to really truly hide kind of some of those raw edges here and there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that, that'll be your texture. Otherwise, you can finish it out with other yeah. materials and get a much smoother surface on it. Yes. Uh, how hard is it to like, cast? Like, I wanted to take this and start mass producing these. Um, I'll get into that, because okay. um, that's that's where we're getting into. Fiberglass is usually used, either, unless it's used in a, um, a molding application, like as a jacket mold or something like that. You can make fiberglass that's just its own separate molds, yeah. um, but then you're usually filling it with a soft substance. Yeah, because a few people actually do that. That's yeah, that's, you know. yeah uh, generally the rule on that is Hard shell for a soft item, soft shell for a hard item, um, with some exceptions. But it takes more work when you deal with those exceptions. Um, as far as applying fiberglass, you know, always remember your safety equipment. The polyester resins that are more commonly used are um, can be toxic if not, you know, using the proper safety equipment. Keep in mind, I mentioned toxic, but if you're using the proper safety equipment. You can do this for decades and decades and never have a health issue for it. Um, depending on your application, you'll want to cut or tear your, your material into an appropriately sized piece. Um, for something like this helmet, where it's a very, you know, very round, very compound curve type situation, I used um, mat inside, which you can actually kind of see in the back there. Um, if, there's enough light getting in um, because the cloth doesn't like real compound curves. The cloth itself is actually a little bit stronger, but uh, like I said, for say this sword, it was literally 
two pieces per side of cloth that I cut, huge big pieces, because the shorter your pieces are, the less strength they have. Um, yeah, and again, if you're using cloth, you want to alternate the grain with the fabric because that gets you the most strength. Because the fiberglass, it's actual strength. If, if anybody's got the little pieces, if you pull the cloth in the direction of the grain, it's extremely strong. You might get some of the opposing grain fibers to strip, you know, slide apart, but you can't tear that by hand. It's dang near impossible for human physical strength to do. Um, big thing, mixing the resin properly. I don't know how many times I've seen stories of somebody going, uh, yeah, I put my resin on my fiberglass, and three days later it's still this sticky, wet, nasty mess. And it's like, um, did you put the hardener in the resin? And they're like, the what? <laughs> The little tube of stuff that came with it, and I don't know what I do what that is. Um, so you need to really pay attention to the mixture directions. Um, there are some ways, depending on what type of resin you're using, like polyester resins can be fudged a little bit. You know, sometimes you can do a hot mix. Um, if it's cold outside or things like that, or you just really want it to kick fast, which means a couple extra drops of hardener. If you want to have a longer working time, you can do one or two drops less. But the less you do, the less chance you have of it actually turning solid. Uh, oh, and my computer just went to sleep. You suck. I should have brought the plug. Computer doesn't like me. There we go. Okay. Yes, that's coming from a page. A very sassy page. <laughs> yeah. uh, some of the resins, um, some of urethane resins actually have a thinner that you can purchase for them um, that will make them flow thinner. Uh, polyester resins, you can actually use a little acetone to thin it down, but you got to be very careful and you actually have to use a little extra hardener when you do that. Um, it's a trick that I use to get it to absorb into the, the fibers even faster. Um, and I can use less resin overall. Um, the biggest thing is a lot of people will also say, uh, well, when I put the resin on, I used a brush, which you should use, uh, but I, all I did was get fibers all over my brush and all over the place. Um, you don't actually brush. You want to use a stippling motion, you know, a, you're pushing the resin into the fiber. So that's that's one of those things that a lot of people don't know and, and oftentimes are terribly missed in instructional videos. They just go, okay, I mixed the resin and the next thing you've got is a picture of the thing that's completely resined and they don't show you that it's going and it adds weight. Pushing the fiber, you know, the resin into it. Um, and again, a lot of times your environment Temperature can be a huge factor in how well it cures. Um, too cold, and again, you're just going to have kind of this sticky, gelatinous substance for the rest of the life. Um, too hot, and you're just going to have a very short working time. I have fiberglassed in 103 degree weather. You have about three minutes to get it done. From the moment you start dripping it in there, stir, you're just stabbing it into the poor fiberglass, trying to get it in there in time. So, does anybody have any questions at the moment? Yes? Um, I heard there were some types of resins that like, melt bonus energy. Yes, um, that's something that you have to be careful with if you use like the, the pink styrene foams and stuff like that. Um, you do have to seal it properly. If you don't seal it properly, all you will get is a melting mess. What do you seal the insulation foam on? I actually just use wood glue. I buy the big gallon bottles of wood glue at the hardware store. Um, yeah, that stuff right there. And I mix it down with water a little bit just to get it so that it will get in the pores. Yep. The other snake. Ooh. <laughs> 
<laughs> there we go. So yeah, that's that's something when you're doing application on the pink phone. And thank you for bringing that up because I think I actually forgot to mention that anyway. I, I've used like the fiberglass resin on EVA foam to work fine. Yeah, EVA foam. Um, I mean, it's goofy and kind yeah, of yeah, kind of get EVA foam cause, can cause some weird issues. If you actually use um, fiberglass, the the glass strand with the resin, it should harden beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, just going straight on top of the EVA foam, it can cause some weird issues. Oh, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of like And if you don't mix resin correctly, does it like... Like I had some vampire juice too, so it for me. And it was like very splotchy, like white and clear, white and clear. That um, that could, those are, like, vampire teeth you were talking about? Yeah. That's more of probably going to be a, uh, a urethane so, resin. So, dental acrylic. Right. Okay, dental acrylic. Um, that could be a mixing issue. Um, I've never used dental acrylic, so I don't know, you know, what to say about that, really. Um, just not something I've ever messed with. Um, you know, quick tips and tricks. Uh, like I said, with the polyester resin, you can thin it slightly and help it absorb into your material easier. You do need to up your, your, um, your mix of your hardener just slightly. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Yep. Um, you want to, oh, I've seen a lot of times where people will fill an entire mixing cup full of fiberglass resin oh. or the polyester resin, and then all of a sudden they're stuck with a big giant glob of, you know, hardened resin that they can't use. So you want to make sure you only use what you can use, you know, mix up what you can use in a few minutes. Um, because it does start to kick in a short amount of time. And depending on the temperature, again, like I said, it can kick even faster. Um, for things that are like complex curves and corners, I generally recommend using the mat, even though it's not quite as strong. Um, big flat straight edges, cloth is wonderful. Um, the cloth alternate your grains for maximum strength. And one of the biggest things I've learned is if you've got a really harsh corner, don't try and force it over the harsh corner. It'll bubble. And then you'll have a very weak corner. Let it just hang off the side so that the corner where it's just kind of sticking up flat, you know, sticking out, then take and work from the other side and mesh it back into where it's sticking out. Then you can trim down that corner and now you've got something almost as strong as if it was curved over and works wonderfully. And this one again, I'm going to play the transitions on it. Did anybody have any questions before I get on this? So, so as far as like actually, so You've got your, your like uh, insulation foam, your prep kit is dry. When you're actually putting the fiberglass onto it, do you, do you dab it onto the fiberglass first and then apply it? Or do you put resin on the foam and then stick the fiberglass on top? I will put a little resin on the, the surface I'm going to fiberglass so first. It yes, to give it just a little stick. Yeah. Um, and even then, like the first layer of fiberglass, I won't even put any extra on the brush. I'll work on kind of pushing that the the uh, the fiberglass into that resin that I've already applied down as much as possible, mm -hmm. and that just gets you you know again more resin just equals more weight, nothing else. Uh, but some of the common uses for fiberglass, especially in costuming. Um, very lightweight props, you can actually see that there is a picture of this sort as it was being made. Um, hardening armor, I love taking very organic shapes that I've made in like EVA foam. Because um, EVA foam works great for making organic shapes. Um, I'm trying to think, it's, I think it's Evil Ted's helmet design. is uses the floor mat foam and creates this beautiful organic round shape for a helmet and you can just take and do fiberglass right over the top of that 
And now you have a hardened helmet that has that wonderful organic shape that you didn't have to spend a million years sanding down corners on from like Pepe Curra and stuff. Um, again, reinforcing Pepe Curra, that's you know, a lot of what was done here. Uh, there are also different ways that you can reinforce Pepe Curra, but fiberglass is one of the most common ways. And then you can even do custom shapes. This right here, uh, if anybody, any of you were watching the cosplay contest last night, the Palatina, that is her shield. We used a big um, exercise ball to get a beautiful curve to it, and we fiberglassed over that. We used a little bit of um, release agent. You can even, if, you, if you're careful with it, you can use like a, a silicone cooking spray or something like that as a release agent. You just want to make sure it's a very thin layer and you wipe any excess off because too much can cause uh, curing problems. But we, uh, we literally just took, a, I think it was like a 30 inch exercise ball or something like that, fiberglass until we were seven rings out or something like that on it, and then let it cure overnight, pop the thing off, and it gave that beautiful dome shape that she had on that shield. So, anybody else have any questions or comments about fiberglass? Or? I guess uh, one. Uh, you may have uh, uh, mentioned this around, maybe I'm trying to catch it. As far as like, uh, some of the, like you mentioned Bondo, which mm -hmm. I played a little bit with, and it was not a very good experience, I would say. Right. Uh, trying to apply that stuff within the window, even if I did a little stuff and trying to kick on it, doesn't come on right, and then I got to set it down. With the fiberglass finishing, if I'm not understanding correctly, you don't have to do as much of that since you apply as little as possible with, uh, but still has the strength. Well, Bondo, I would never use Bondo for any type of hardening application. It is literally a finishing product. No, it's it is. Not that Basically, polyester resin with fillers like talcum powder and mica and stuff like that in there to make it easier to set. Um, but that's pretty much exactly what it is. You can see Bondo on this, uh, this Sabine Wren helmet that I'm working on here. Now, are you going to pick that up? And, uh, and that's the pink stuff. That's the pink stuff that's on there. The rest of that helmet is actually 3D printed. But with the Bondo, that is, you're, if you're using Bondo to harden something, you're probably just asking for cracks. Um, What's well, the best way to cover over uh, UV helmet? So if you're going to lock it with a lot, then you're going to lock it with a new glass. What's your personal? This stuff right here. Um, this, is, I'll get into that as well a little bit, but this is an awesome product by Smooth On. Um, it's called, they've got two versions of it. They've got the Epsilon and the Epsilon Pro. Um, this stuff is the coolest thing I have ever found for EVA foam. It's actually designed to absorb into EVA foam, but it creates a hard shell on it. Um, you can use other products, like some people have mentioned using um, fiberglass resin and whatnot on EVA foam. The problem is that it can have some odd chemical reactions. Yeah, I just wanted to I'm still trying to do my VST or my Murray arm. Right. Um, so it's like, what? Yeah. Okay. This stuff is super cool. If you want it a little, if you want it a little flexible, you use the Pro. If you want it solid, you use the standard Epsilon. Um, I, I wish I had a picture of one of the pieces I did using the Pro right now. But uh, any other questions about uh, fiberglass in general? No. I know it's like late on Sunday, but are you guys even alive anymore? <laughs> it's at the end of a three-day oh, convention, both of us. I'm here. Wait. Okay. Um, so the big thing you talked about was limiting how much resin to use. Is there a good tell or way to ensure you're not oversaturating it? Um, getting enough to do its job. I like for it to, I mean, actually, this piece right here kind of shows you we could have maybe saturated it a hair more on that, that shield piece. Um, but having just a little bit of that kind of very minimal air bubbles is okay. Um, perfectly, you 
perfect world, you'd actually vacuum bag it, but I can't afford a vacuum bag in the setup. They are kind of prohibitively expensive. Um, but that would be really cool, because what that does is literally sucks all the air and the excess resin out of the fiberglass, so you're literally left with the perfect ratio of uh, glass strand fiber and your resin, uh, and that's actually how they make high-end like race car parts, is they vacuum back everything, and it's, you've got this thing that almost is thin enough that you can't feel, but you can you know throw it across the room and it won't shatter. It's um, but you just want to have it, you want it where you can still, I, I'd say the, sorry, let me start again. The, what I use as an indicator is that my fiberglass has all gone translucent, but I can still see the texture of the material quite clearly on the surface. So that, like, oh man, we're already running that down. Wow. Um, you, just a quick question. Since mm -hmm. this seems like you were getting done with is it possible for you to pass around the sword so you can see? Them? No. The owner of that has had me under explicit instructions that nobody handles that. Um, that is her, that's her baby. So, um, I would love to, but no. Can you stab me at once? No. Um, even though it probably wouldn't get hurt, I am going to, you know, respect the will of the person who actually owns it. Uh, she was wonderfully kind enough to let me borrow it for this. Um, anybody else on fiberglass? Uh, yeah, when you mix the resins, like how much time do you give before you start applying it? Like, is it right away, or do you give it some time to like begin? Yes. Yeah, so once I've got it stirred up thoroughly, I just transition right over because you've only got that maybe five to ten minute window. So what do you use to stir it with? Do you the just brush. Okay. Yeah. I just pour it in. Use a brush. Um, since I apparently got really long-winded on fiberglass, I guess I'm going to have to ask for more time next time. Um, but a couple of things I really want to do, I've got a bunch of um, catalogs from Smooth On. They make some wonderful products, like you get into molding and casting. They're like actually nearby. Yeah, they're literally just down, what, a couple of blocks down, is it? It's on Grape Street. Um, the guys over there, I think I see Ryan in the back. Ryan here? Yes, Ryan's here. He's the guy who you can pretty much tell him an application of what you're looking to do. Um, Beyond fiberglass, um, I know they deal in it a little bit, but not as much as other places do. Um, he's the guy, you can go in there and you go, hey, I'm trying to get this effect. And he will literally go, oh, you need this box, and this box, and they even hold classes, but I've got um, a ton of their um, catalogs up here. Um, but they get into like molding and casting type stuff. Um, you can you can actually come up and handle like my uh, silicone uh, molds and things like that. Which you know that's one of those things I did for this. Your things are super cool. Um, I don't know how many of you can see the light uh, that you can actually get that reflective inside. I actually used a little piece of aluminum foil inside there and cast it in. But um, urethanes are, you know, if you want to be able to replicate things and you just want very different effects, those are great. How many um, times have you replicated the eye? I have probably made about 10 or 15 of those eyes. Um, and then, you know, since Jinx was mentioning um, coating foam, uh, a lot of people cover things foam in like Warbla, um, Jade, her wonderful Genos that was on stage at the uh, cosplay contest, that was coated in Black Warbla. Um, black Warbla I've actually got a lot more respect for than the normal Warbla. Um, it does produce a much, much nicer finish, but if she ever did those again, I'd make her buy one of these kits um, from Smooth On over at Reynolds because she would have a much less bulky armor. Uh, you probably could have done those at about half the thickness. And it would have just looked that much more streamlined that way. Is that my five minute warning? And I said I'd show you guys a ridiculously simple way to light things up. So I'm going to set this microphone down. Fire. 
Single little LED that's meant to run on about three volts of power. Line them up, throw a little bit of electrical tape over it, you now have a lit prop. It's the witch. Uh, so nice. Huh? It's the witch. <laughs> but that is the, the single simplest way to add a strong light into a prop. It is. They are ridiculously bright. I buy packs of like a hundred of these for about um, ten dollars on them. Is that the same brand lights that I use for fish bones? Uh, same brand lights that I use for fish bones. Um, How long does one of those last with a single LED? I I can't find the darn thing. I think somebody ran off with it, unfortunately. But luckily, I can make more. Um, for those of you who may have seen me Friday night, I was walking around with a little glowing Gurren Logan spiral drill piece. Um, and I'm waiting for another part on that to come in so it'll get, do the breathing effect. I left one of these on in that spiral drill key. Basically this setup, but it just has an actual battery holder attached to it. And I decided, I put it in about 6 o'clock one night before we actually had the cosplay staff meeting. And it finally got obnoxiously dim about three days later. So it's like you can you can do it a whole con pretty much. You could probably do a whole con or at least easily a full day of con with it being very bright. It was a little bit dimmer the next day. Um, about 72 hours later, it was just kind of this faint glow in the corner type thing. Like a glow stick. Yeah, I mean, but it's going to be brighter than your average glow stick. You put well, one of these in like a little piece of tubing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, much longer lifespan than a glow stick. But that's the yeah. easiest way to make something light up. That's, that's a good. powerful light. It's even yeah. Like if I shine it in your face, that's pretty obnoxious, isn't it? Well, so. Don't you see that yeah. <laughs> I, th I think the one problem with those is making it so that you can get in there and replace that. You know, right, which that can be, you know, that I'll have to, of course, do it another course because we've only got like two or three minutes left at this point. Um, anybody else have any other questions or comments or things like that for me? Yeah, um, so I make this guy out of my Christmas tree. Nice! And, uh, because I hate Christmas. But I, 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 had, I dropped and I had this crack here. Uh huh. Um, what's a pretty good inlay to put in there for like. Um, I would probably use something like um, Smooth on Smooth Cast. You probably just tape off the end or use some kind of clay to seal the ends. Yeah. Make sure you get it upright. Uh, it might even look really cool if you use one of the translucent. I, yeah, ones. I want to be like a clear with like a you know, yeah. yeah, you can get clear like effects that. with the, the 325, 326, um, 320. The big difference in numbers is usually the amount of working time you have. Um, but yeah, like this, you know, the, the gem eyes on these are um, smooth cast 326 because I wanted a longer time to make sure all the bubbles got out and things like that. Um, but that's probably what I would recommend. Cool. So. As far as, um, I made a mask recently, um, non-toxic coatings for things that are close to your face. What do you recommend? Um, most of the materials are, once they are properly cured, are wonderfully inert. Um, even fiberglass resins, unless you have rough fiberglass up against your skin, um, that can cause irritation because those fibers can get terribly sharp. Um, but I have made masks like there was that Casey Jones mask in Pepecura. I just put a couple of pieces of EVA foam where it was going to hit the hard points on the face. Okay. And that guy's worn it dozens of times. Um, but once it's had some time to gas out, it's not going to be harmful. Um, it's usually while it's nice and wet that you want to make sure you got one of these. 
give it, you know, a week or so to gas out for the main fumes. You might still have a little smell, but at that point it's pretty inert. Um, urethanes are also really great for that kind of thing, um, like the inside of this. There's some fiberglass to strengthen the bottom edge, but up inside the top, it's all urethane. I just, you know, slushed it around in there to get it to coat, mostly because I wanted it solid inside these little antennae, so I could take it, you know, smack those, and they don't snap off instantaneously. Go ahead and touch one. Anybody else? Anybody? Show him. Please show him. Oh, yeah. So, what Christine is wanting me to show is I'm working on a Rene scythe, and she's been wonderful in helping me to sculpt this because she understands. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. Crazy monster anatomy much better than I do. But this will be completely coated in fiberglass. And right now, I'd say it weighs in at probably about three pounds. Something like that, yeah. Um, and we might have it once the blade is also attached. It'll probably be about a five or a six pound head and then a couple of pounds of, um, you know, dowel rods. So I could probably keep the entire piece, even though it will be this giant, you know, six foot blade of a scythe plus an eight foot tall, you know, total, it'll be less than 10 pounds. Um, <laughs> yes, it will be con <laughs> And it will also be nearly indestructible. <laughs> okay, and our time's up, guys. Um, if you'd like to grab.